So you essentially relinquish control. Mm -hmm. He was just 14 two seconds ago. Yeah. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful, how are you? Thank you for being here. Of course. I love you, appreciate I love you. You, appreciate you are you. a mother of two, mm -hmm. you're a wife, you are the founder of ARMY. Yeah. How did you know motivation in sport was something that you needed to pursue? I think dad taught us that. I think dad really demonstrated growing up uh, this marriage between sport and spirituality. And I think he did it so beautifully that I knew when I started coaching that I wanted to emulate what I saw in dad. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the greatest lessons that he taught me uh, as a coach, as he's you know managing the Chicago White Sox and in this intense, uh, you know, with the media scrutiny and everything that comes with that level of coaching, he told me, he said, it is important for me to coach the man, not just the athlete. Mm. That for me in my position here, he said, it is equally as important that the father is just as great as the athlete, that the mm. man is just as great as the athlete, that the brother, that the son is just as great as the athlete. Yeah. And for me, that is what really broke open and unlocked this opportunity mm. in using physicality to coach something bigger than just abs and quads. Yeah. And that's what we know you as. I mean, people call you a fitness evangelist. You uh, had a long tenure at SoulCycle. You were an employee there, and now you became an owner, a founder of ARMY. What was that transition like? For me, it was, um, I never wanted the responsibility of my own. I didn't want that responsibility. I actually ran from that for a while, to be honest with you, because mm. it was, life was good. Life was easy. Mm. Life was turnkey. And I enjoyed that. Mm. But I knew I was being called to more. Mm. I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was being called to more. And I got to the point where I could not jump. Mm. I could not take a risk. I could not bet on myself. I got to a point where I finally realized, yo, wait a minute. You've actually earned ownership. Mm. You've earned the right to own your intellectual property. You've earned the right mm. to own your business. And for me, it literally got to, to a point where staying began to, I had a physical reaction to staying. So you felt more of the weight of being, I guess, essentially disobedient, knowing that you needed to transition to being obedient. You knew that God was calling you higher to more. That's right. So how, what kind of words of encouragement could you lend to someone that is immobilized. They're in that position where they know they need to jump, but fear is just intercepting that decision. There is nothing more freeing than that jump. Mm. There is nothing more freeing that the paralysis at times happens because you're stuck where you shouldn't be. Mm. And so the choice to break free and jump will change your life. Mm. So whoever is out there listening and feels like that they are in that moment where they know they need to go, I encourage you to go. Mm. Because, and I, and I say this all the time, but if God let you see it, he put it in you mm. to be just that. Mm. 
Mm. Like you have everything in you to yeah. be who you were called to be. Yeah. And, you know, it's like that old, um, that old saying that talks about the ship wasn't made for the shore. The okay. ship was made to be out in the sea. Mm-hmm. Get out in the sea. Mm-hmm. So whoever's listening to this that needs to be out in the sea, you are equipped for the sea. Mm-hmm. Get out in the sea. Yeah. So do you feel like you're in the sea? I'm in the sea. <laughs> do you feel like <laughs> as I'm you're in, in the, sea. the sea? I'm in the sea. Of course you're in the sea. And as you're in the sea, looking back, is it as more freeing and understanding that, thank God that I'm in the sea, even though I have these twists and turns and these tensions? No, sometimes you feel the storm of the sea. I'm in the sea feeling the storm of the sea. I'm in the sea feeling like this water is going a little bit high. It feels like it's almost over my head, Jesus. It's almost over my head. No, I'm in the sea. I'm in the sea doggy paddling. You know what I mean? Like there's moments where you're in the sea where it just is, it's luxurious and it's beautiful and you're in the backstroke is so lovely and just, it's amazing. And then there's moments where that storm is in that sea and you're like, yo, but you called me to the sea. What do you do when the storm hits in the sea? Because right now I do feel like I don't believe that you're necessarily in a storm, but I feel like you are in a weighty season. And what I mean by that is your son just transferred. He lives now in New Jersey. And with that back and forth, that's, that's strenuous. Your husband is literally across. You guys are essentially living a bi-coastal life. Your husband is in New Jersey, New York right now, and you're in LA. And so that's a weight in itself. You have army. That's a weight in itself. You have all those different things. So I believe that that's a part of, I don't know if it's a storm, but the waves have been coming up. You know what I mean? The waves have been, are are here. So what is your mental talk? What is your self-dialogue? Well, for anyone watching, my son is 15 years old. And so Uh, my son that's in Jersey with my husband, and I am in L.A. most of the time with our 13-year-old. So we have a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old. The 15-year-old and my husband are in Jersey. Myself and the 13-year-old are here in L.A. with our dog, Prince. Um, And I feel like life is, for me, those waves are training me for the water ahead of me. Come on. For me, when I think about the waves and they're splashing up against me and they're hitting up against me, I'm literally screaming at the waves and crying, but I know that the waves are not happening to me, but for me. Mm -hmm. And I know that the waves are strengthening me and preparing me for what's in front of me. And I know without the waves that there is no way that I can be all that I am called, created, and intended to be. So there are moments where I am in that storm or in that choppy water, and I'm saying, bring it on, bring it on. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I know you put me here for a time as this. I know that this is one of the most extraordinary moments in human history, this the pandemic, a war, there's so much going on. And every single one of us that are, that are occupying, occupying space on this earth, we have been called and created for this very time. Mm-hmm. And things are gonna be hard. Things are hard. Hard. Life is hard. Hard. Life has waves and it's choppy and it's stormy and that is life. Yeah. And that is life. That does not mean that God is not good. That does not mean that he is not on the throne. That does not mean that we can't do hard things. That does not mean that we are not equipped to do our life. That does not mean that. Mm -hmm. So bring on the waves Mm -hmm. because I know the waves are preparing me for something. Mm. And to think about my family that I so desperately want under the same roof. And as I was dropping my husband off at the airport last night and I called you, I just got done screaming in the steering wheel, like, why? I'm tired. Why? I just want us to be together. 
mm-hmm. under the same roof and do life. I just, I want to wake up with Edward in the house and Jerome in the house and Renzi in the house and Prince. And I want us all, you know, like, I, I want that. I, I miss that. I long for that. My heart aches for that. Mm. And when I called you, I had just come out of a moment. But, but then the, on the other flip side of that, I realized that there is no way that Edward, Renzi, could potentially be all that they were created to be without this tug and this pull and this, this strengthening and what's happening in our family yeah. right now. And when I think about our childhood, yeah. this is exactly what mom and dad did. Exactly. This is exactly what mom did. Yep. I remember those times where mom would take dad to the airport and he was getting on the plane to go to spring training. And because we were in school, we weren't gonna be able to see dad until the summer. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, he was making, you know, minimum wage in baseball at that time, which wasn't that much money, yeah. we couldn't even afford to travel all the time. Mm-hmm. And the sacrifice that mom made, you know, to stay home and keep us together and raise us while his dad was away doing that, that was. Heavy. Heavy. That was heavy. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me was preparing me for this very moment. So who am I not to allow when Edward makes it on the New York Red Bulls? Who am I not to allow that to take place? Because he is preparing for what is for him. Come on. Come you on. know? Yeah. And even Renzi. This is hard for Lorenzo not having us all together, but he's being prepared for what's for him. And so I just believe that. It's the crushing. I, it, it is absolutely the crushing. It's the crushing, but I have receipts for how good God has been, so I refuse to forget that part. Mm, I refuse to forget that part. We have to refuse to forget that part, but we also have to, yes, we look at the equity of God, but also thank God for the suffering. Thank God for the crushing. Thank God for stepping on us to press out That's what right. he needs to press out. That's right. What he's pressing out of you is something, because I already feel like, I mean, yes, you're my older sister, but I've already feel like you got all the gold, but clearly there's more. Yeah. Clearly there, there's more that he's producing in you yeah. for more. There, there's, there's, there's greater things ahead. There's greater. So of course, the, the greater the blessing, the, the greater the reward, the bigger the storm, the bigger the crushing. Yeah. So thank God for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just, I, I never want to negate the fact that there, the purpose in the pain. Yeah. There's so much purpose in the pain. And I know, you're, you know, it's a painful season. But just like you said, in that perspective that you have, and kudos to you for having the courage to keep that perspective, because that's difficult. Yeah. And with you as a mom, you know, I'm a new mom, 15 yeah. months in. Crushing it. May Jones. I May wish she was here. Jo- oh, I almost mama, didn't, I almost didn't oh, want to come because she wasn't going to be here. I was like, I want to, I oh, only want to come. May Jones going to be here. I only want to come. Mama, baby. This is his <laughs> God, mom. You had to make a critical decision to allow Edward to go and do what he does. Once again, back to the fear factor of maybe potentially the mom guilt coming in, the mom shame coming in, anything that you may feel maybe neglect. How do you navigate those things when they come and hopefully not agree or believe with them? I mean, I think it's the same thing as we were talking about earlier when you get to that point where you have to jump. Like, I remember it was his 15th birthday and and Edward and Jerome got on a red eye to New York to try out for the Red Bulls. Yeah, so he was just 14, two seconds ago. Like the day before, he was 14. And then he's 15, he's on a red eye, he's going to try out. And I'm not thinking anything of it. Because let me tell you something, he's done this before. He's gone to different places around the country and just to see where he's at. And so I thought this was another one of those things. Let's see where I'm at compared to other kids in the nation. Cool. Yep. By the time he comes back from that trip and has been offered a position on the team, again, that was nothing new. He had been offered positions on teams 
in other parts of the country. Yeah. And it just was like, oh, that's great. Okay, so yeah, you're dope. You can put, you're great, but yeah, no. Um, but for whatever reason, I knew it. Mm. I knew it when he said it, that he had to go. I didn't know it when he went that that's what was gonna happen, but I knew it when he said it, that he had to go. Mm. And it, it just, it's the same feeling when you have to jump. Mm-hmm. It's the same feeling that like, I'm almost completely unmoved by the results. I just know I'm supposed to jump. Like the results aren't even on me. It's almost like when you get to a point where you're moved more by being in purpose and being in the will of God and doing doing what you were created to do, that really honoring that outweighs what it looks like and the results that come on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Like that's not even what motivates you. Mm -hmm. So it could be, even when I left Seoul to, to start ARMY with Akin and Trey, it could have been the biggest failure ever. But, but it's I, what he does in that jump. It's what he does in that obedience. It's what he does when we, yeah, that's good. And that part, mm-hmm. that, that's the part. So regardless of the result, and that for me is what I hope, hope unlocks this for whoever's listening or watching, whoever's struggling with that piece. It's not even the result. It's what happens in the unlock in the jump. Yeah. When you're airborne when you haven't even landed yet, but when you had the courage and the willingness to even, to even be in the air. So what did it do for you? What did you gain from that transition? Not what we know, what we see what Edward's doing, he's doing great, blah, 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 but what, to your point, couldn't agree more. Now tell me, what did you get in that? What I feel like what I- What produced out of you? I think whatever produced out of me is still producing, mm-hmm. but I think what, what happened for me, this may sound dramatic, but what happened for me was I felt like I, I'm not going to cry because my face is beat. But you can. But I'm not going to. (laughs) (laughs) But I feel like what happened for me is um, that moment for me was I gave Edward back to God. That's a fact. That's so hard. That's hard. So you essentially relinquish control. Mm-hmm. And as a mom, you don't ever feel like, especially when these kids are at this age, you just don't imagine. You don't imagine that happening yet. Mm -hmm. He was just 14, two seconds ago. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. But, But I believe that's the way it's supposed to be the whole time anyway. And it took me that to do that. And so now he can give you more and he can trust you with more because when you, you know, hold things and not Edward, just in general, when, when, you're, when we are holding things like such a tight grip, like a death grip, we're not realizing that as we're holding these things that we need to let go, we're not making room for the new. You're making room for more. God made room for more. So kudos to you for making that hard decision. That's why I asked you. I mean, yes, I'm a new mom, but that's something that I'm like, oh man, like, I don't even, I, could, I can't imagine the heartache, the pull. So kudos to you. And I respect you for that and I honor you for that. Switching gears a bit, we all hopefully prayerfully are at the end of this pandemic. Mm-hmm. And what I believe and what I've been asking everybody is that that has presented us a great offering of transition. Um, transitioning out of the old and transitioning into the new. What do you believe you have transitioned out of 
and what are you transitioning into? Woo! I for sure am still in the process of becoming whatever it is that the work that's being done in my life, I feel like I am literally in the middle of that work. So I don't know if I for certain have that exact answer um, because I'm in a moment and I'm in a season. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think like we spoke on before, you know, I have transitioned out of thinking that I needed control, Mm -hmm. thinking that I needed to have all the answers thinking that I needed complete visibility to the destination before I was willing to take a step. Mm, That's good. I understand that that is no longer how God works in my life. Yeah. And I have accepted and am willing to trust. And I think I've embraced the joy of the journey. Mm -hmm. I think if I look back at myself a handful of years from now, that my head was so down and the grind was so real and not that it's not still, but I feel like I have moments now where I lift my head up and I like can acknowledge Mm. his goodness and I can acknowledge the miracles. Yeah. And, I, and I'm able to appreciate those in a different way. So that's what you believe you're transitioning out of? Yeah, I'm transitioning out of control mm-hmm. and uh, feeling like I need control. Yeah. And realizing that I don't have to be in control. Yeah. I just have to be obedient and I have to honor. And... And I feel like this last couple years has been this, and for everyone, I feel like it's, you know, we're all on this journey. But I feel like for for whatever reason, and in the most beautiful way, that I'm not looking at it as just a journey, but just the sweet adventure that I get to go on. Ooh, that's good. If you are writing the Angel Manuel Davis biography, what chapter are you in? Maybe chapter six. Like I still think there's like a good amount of chapters left. So maybe like chapter six. Enjoying the ride. Hmm. That's good. Enjoying the ride. Wow. Here at Butta, we love, of course, to talk about the vitamin C serums, the charcoal, the mask, all the things to prepare and make our exterior look good. What do you do to keep up your internal being? I just feel like I have to saturate my heart in the Word. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I just got to stay in the Word. And, you know, Mom... Mom and dad read probably more than we read. Yes. They're like readers. And so I feel like they like literally like, you know, mom is like literally in her Bible every morning and reading her devotion. And whether she's in town, you know, from Sac, staying at my house or your house, we know that first thing in the morning that we'll see mom at the table. Yep. You know, reading her word with her cup of coffee and devotional her book. Has she her has like devotion. three books. Yeah, it just has it all laid out, and it's usually quiet and no one's up yet. But you can kind of, you know, if you, you could catch her there, if you wake up as early as she does. You know, for me, it's just like listening to the word always. Yeah, like yeah. always, like just feeling like I have to just have it on. You know, yeah. and and. You know, and and letting it, letting it soak in without me even being aware mm-hmm. of what's soaking. But yeah. I think um, that's for me what keeps me clean on the inside. That's good. What's next? I have fun things happening. I still am not done with this book that I've been writing for so long. It's the hardest thing. Um, 
to write a book. Gosh, it's so hard. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. Why is it so hard? Because I guess there's no like do-overs. Mm. You know, it's not like you put it out in the world and you're like, oh, wait, let me fix that. <laughs> yeah. It's so, like, no, actually, here it is. Yeah, no, so this, is it. this is it. Um, is it hard to be, I, don't, I mean, I actually don't feel like it's hard for you to be vulnerable and transparent. Is it hard to kind of dig, it, dig deep and look back on what your life has been? No, I think I just like, I think I talk in circles. I think I have like a lot of stories and it's, it's, it's connecting, being really intentional about connecting the principles and the stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's so many of them and, and sometimes that just feels overwhelming and then maybe sometimes it doesn't feel like it's in chronological order or maybe it feels, and so it just is like, it's just a lot to shuffle through. Yeah. And I feel like that's not like necessarily part of my gifting. So it just makes it really hard to like shuffle through all of those stories. And I don't want to just write a book to tell the stories, but I feel like part of what I do as a coach and as a fitness evangelist is I take my story um, and I use my story to teach and to coach. And so it's really important that the right principle and lesson is attached to, to these stories. Yeah. And so that part is just hard for me. Um, I'm getting in the studio this uh, upcoming week again uh, to start making some more music. I don't actually make the music, but I work with these amazing producers that put these crazy beats together. And then I get to like, just lay my motivation over them. And it's been a passion project. So, and I think, you know, just full-time bi-coastal parenting. Yeah. And, and, and really leaning into that. Are you happy? I am happy. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. You're happy. Good. Are well, you then. happy? Am I happy? Yeah. Yeah, very happy. Good. Full. Feel like I'm in a, 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 a season of fullness and a season of finding my new flow. That's probably what's been the most challenging. And so I think in moments I can feel heavy because I'm like, wait, is this the right flow? But overall, I'm grateful. Are you giving yourself permission to discover the flow? Oh, yeah. Good. This is it. This, I'm, I'm, this is even right now, like before I started with you, just getting a video of Mae Jones. Like, I mean, that could bring me to tears now, but I, that could be tough. Yeah. But yet knowing that this is also part of what I'm called to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yet finding the flow and being okay that it could be hard. Yeah. You know, but it but it's a part of just whatever is being produced in me, but also knowing that to show up and show out to each assignment that I have and each call. So I definitely feel like I'm giving permission. And you know what you just said, which is crazy because I don't think I've always put this connection together. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not the flow. And I feel like we've always cor correlated the flow with ease. Ease, that's good. That's a word. That's it. That's it. And so even for me, it's hard, but okay. It, it, again, it's just like the crushing or the pressing in the life. Just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's not what is where you're supposed to be. That's right. So even with the flow, even though it feels rigid and it feels like, okay, wait, is this how I'm supposed to, like, I feel like I'm, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. but yet I'm like, okay, well, there's, but every time I show up to whatever it is, there's grace. Yeah. And that's how I know yeah. that I'm in the right flow. That's how I know. Well, um, you're crushing it. Oh, as as you're being crushed, you're crushing it, mm -hmm. and that's an amazing thing to still be able to crush as you're being crushed. And so I've seen it, and I know what it took to get you here, and I know the the back end. You know, not everyone knows the back end, but I know the back end, and in the midst of being crushed, to still be able to crush and to knock it out the park is something that is extraordinary. 
And it's a commitment that you have made to the call on your life. It's a commitment that you've made to Mae Jones. And so, you know, I honor you. Mm. And I say, keep doing it, sis. I appreciate that. You're doing it. I appreciate that. Wow. Thank you. And this is why we have a podcast coming out. (laughs) (laughs) And this is why we have a podcast, okay? We don't know when we're going to get to it. We are in a a full season. We are in some seasons, but we will get get y'all this (laughs) podcast. podcast. We will get this podcast Uh, out. That's so good. I appreciate that. I needed that. Love you. I love you so much. Appreciate that. That's what everybody told you, you know, get a job, go to college, get married, have kids. And I didn't have any of those things. And I didn't really love myself because I didn't have them. The one thing that's consistent in life is change. You're not always going to be happy with that change. It's what you do when you're faced with it that matters the most. Cry, kick, scream, because we do all of that. But then you got to move on because guess what? Another storm's coming. Thank you.